Repentance are one of my favourite UK bands. A band that brought veganism and straight edge back to the forefront of people's minds and exposed a new generation to the vegan straight edge ideology. They were a vegan straight edge band from the south coast of England. The band are often described as a 90s band, people often comparing them to Day of Suffering, Reprisal, Archangel and more. They released their demo in violation of Azza on Atonement Records in February of 2013. Atonement for me released some of the best music in the UK in that time period, including Natural Order, Renounced, Below, Ark of the Covenant, Deal With It and many more. The band released their debut LP, The Sickness of Eden, on the 17th of February 2015 on Carry the Weight Records to worldwide acclaim. At the start of 2016, they headed to the US and played FYA Fest in Florida, playing both the main show and the after show. In February of 2016, they released a 7 inch called Cleansing with two new songs, which was released on Carry the Weight Records and Life Layer Regret in Australia. In April 2016, they released their discography double LP Gatefold Vinyl with all of the tracks today and a live session which was recorded with Ian Bolt at Stuck in a Name Studios in Nottingham. The cover included a collection of live photos of the band and a few of my old film photos were included as well as being used on some old t-shirt designs as well. Repentance played their last show on Saturday the 21st of May 2016 at the Forum in Tunbridge Wells and raised £720 for Friend Animal Rescue in Kent. The last show lineup was Renounced, Blind Authority and Realm Torment. Andy the Bassist also played in Breaking Point, Never Again, Sectarian Violence and Wayfarer. Ollie played in Flame of Mind and also played in Arms Race, Guidance and Mankind. Rob played in Another Day in Hell and Cornered, the Irish one, not the Dutch one. Pat plays in A Vow and Firm Standing Law with Cold World vocalist Dan Mills. He's also played in Final Rage, Inherit, Never Again, Breaking Point, Ego Trip, Sectarian Violence, Wayfarer, as well as running Carry the Weight Records with Tom Southard. Carry the Weight was an integral part of the UK scene, releasing bands from the UK and overseas starting out in 2009. They released records for Race Traitor, Eco Strike, Renounced, Repentance, Coke Bust, Drawing Last Breath, Culture, Obstruct, Breaking Point, Red Death and many more. As well as records they put on festivals, I only made it to two Carry the Weight Fests, the 2016 edition with Coke Bust, Violent Reaction and more, and the last show being in 2017 featuring Integrity 108 and many more as well. I sat down to speak to John before the Blind Authority last show in London. John is someone I always love bumping into as he's one of the most genuine people I've met in hardcore. So I went to see uh, Local Heroes Cranium, Triple H, Canaan and Course of Action and Sheep's band played a band called Twelfth Angel Calling, but they didn't have their bassist there, so it was a bit of a shitter, really, for them, I think. Okay, uh, bring a the sh- yeah, the show was absolutely brilliant, uh, and obviously had quite a lasting effect on my life, being that I went straight edge pretty soon afterwards. Because uh, were you, had you heard the bands before, or did you drive along? No, I, my, so I had some friends being like a mosher and, and what have you I think I was about 13 years old probably slightly older um, some guys that I knew in the year above me had sort of taken me under their wing really because I was just a snotty skateboarder um, and as we sort of got skateboarding together went out and things they sort of started in, um, inviting us along to stuff and most of the time it was just getting stoned around their house but I, I, I have never ever been stoned I got drunk once when I was 12 so I didn't really want to do that. But one of the guy's brothers was in this band called Triple H, who are absolutely brilliant jazz fusion hardcore. Uh, <laughs> strange mix, but absolutely brilliant. Um, and so he said, why don't you come to this show? And so we kind of had to sneak in and pretend we were 16, because it was like a 16 only show. Uh, and we sort of met his brother and they kind of were a bit disdainful of us because I was dressed in like a Metallica t-shirt and had my nails painted black and you know got I actually got whiplash from headbanging at the back of the show uh, but it was a very I, I'd never seen anything like it I'd only really liked Slipknot and Metallica and then to have this fucking energy and all these people going mad I suppose in hindsight it's like people going mad but I doubt they were you know probably only five people at the front but to me it was just absolutely insane Oh, ones that are not even worth mentioning. So everyone's had 
been in terrible bands. I was in, the first band I was ever in were called X Sadako X, so named after the Japanese version of The Ring. We played one show in someone's conservatory. That was rubbish. Uh, and then I was in a band called On The Attack and we played around a little bit, but weren't really any good. Yeah. Um, and then I, the last band before Repentance uh, I was in was a band called Tyburn. And I was actually in that with Dargan, who's the guitarist of Canaan. I kind of, funny story, I met him uh, shitting himself in a car park uh, in Hendon and we became friends um, and we formed that band. And we, we did a few shows, put a demo out, demos out there somewhere online, and, but it's, again, not very good. It's very I mean, I mean, it was great. Um, it still makes me feel really uncomfortable being, you know, the modest, the modest person that I am. But you know, a lot of people did come up and go, oh, "I've gone vegan because of listening to Repentance," or "I've gone vegan," or because of you. And, and, and I always felt really uncomfortable with that because I think that although our music was kind of a catalyst for a few for a few people to go vegan, I think it's actually the people themselves that went vegan. It's got nothing to do with us. You have to be a compassionate. Uh, individual in order to to even want to look into it, to even be receptive to the message and I think in a certain sense with hardcore we're kind of preaching to the converted so people's eyes are already really open to these sort of uh, fringe ideas um, but it I don't know, I, I always felt uncomfortable when people say I went vegan because of you or I went vegan because of repentance or I went vegan because of the stuff you said in songs or, be, or between sets because I kind of just feel that yeah, I might have said it and been a catalyst, but actually that was in people all along. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, again, you know, hardcore is this, is this wonderful thing where, and, and for me certainly, I was, when I started in hardcore, I was 13 years old, I was then instantly exposed to um, veganism, anarchist politics, extreme left-wing politics, vegetarianism, all these kind of fringe ideas that people have. Uh, and... I, I, yeah, I just I, I don't think I know we had an impact as a band, but I don't think it's as big as some people might think, to be honest. So I, I suffer quite badly f with obsessive compulsive disorder. I have obsessive compulsive disorder. which actually focuses quite strongly on both veganism and straight edge. So you know, people say, oh, "How do people stay true?" Well, it's actually because I'm completely mentally ill. Um, so actually, having people say that to me, while it's wonderful, and and obviously, I, the whole point of the band was to be a platform to spread veganism. That was. A very clear objective from from day one. The more people told me, oh, "I went straight because of you," or "I went vegan because of you," <laughs> the iller I got because I felt like I had to sort of nail myself to this real puritanical view of veganism and straight edge. Um, but that's you know, it's nobody else's fault. But that's my own. But it's yeah, it, it's it's a it's a bittersweet thing for people to say that because I'm so glad that we were able to push a message on to a lot of people. But on the other hand. You know, I don't know that it was just us, I think it was actually the people power and, and, and that type of thing. I think that, so I'm, I'm, I would say that I'm a punk, even though I don't dress like a punk, the music I listen to is so far removed from punk. Um, for me, hardcore is is all about this like DIY ethic, and I think if you are afforded that platform, you you should use it to to speak on things that are important. Like to me, veganism is is infinitely important. It's so much more important than straight edge, even though straight edge is very important to me personally. Veganism is this more global, in, you know, globally important thing that we've got. Um, and I, I I'm of the first, you know I don't believe that hardcore should only be really serious and you should always have a, a frown on your face and be grimacing but I do believe that it's an important vehicle for change and that's what hardcore is to me and that's what punk is to me it's about having an effect on a local level that macro level you know if, 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 if you can be in a band and you can touch if you can affect uh, four, five, six people and then they go on and they affect three, four, five, six people, and then they go on and affect three, four, five, six people. We've got this growing thing where we've, we've done something locally, but it's having an impact globally and spreading out, and I think that's what's really important about hardcore. I don't, I think that these, 
just calling out a mosh call is, is, is really taking away from the platform that you've been given. So I think that's all to do with the, the Pat Hassan work ethic and hype machine, really. Uh, like I said, I mean, all the other bands that I were in were, you know, I was kind of saying the same things. They were, they were more personal because not everyone in the band was vegan and not everyone in the band was straight edge and things like that. So it was really more of a personal thing. But Pat had created, you know, he's, he's got an incredible work ethic. He's, even in what he's doing now as a, as a professor in Cairo, he's just able to just put himself into so many different things. I think it was him that really pushed it initially and got that hype going. I don't think people would have listened as much if we weren't on CTW. If, if Pat wasn't in the band, you know, I, don't, I really don't think it would have gone as far as it did. I rewrote them. <laughs> yeah. So Pat did have. So you'll be able to see Pat's influence in the, in, in the demo. Uh, all the stuff about uh, Thrasso Caressi and, and all of the stuff from like uh, literature and things like that is all is all Pat. Um, but yeah, I, I did. So when I read it, I thought this isn't me. Um, so a lot of the more not that I'm criticising Pat. I think that you know that allegory has a place in music. It has in vegan straighted hardcore for a long time you know you go back to any of the vegan straighted bands in, in Belgium or whatever and it's always there um, but I think it was the, the demo was definitely a collaborative process so I took Pat's lyrics we all sat down together in fact we went we went for a burger at Annie's Burger Shack um, and then we went back to Bolty's recording studio and we re rewrote it we were up till three in the morning rewriting the lyrics so they more fitted me so it was never written in stone yeah, those those guys wrote all the music. I didn't have any input in. I'll oh, put this here and do that. I mean, I'm ungifted in terms of music, but um, yeah, I think I, I I wouldn't be able to sing somebody else's. I didn't sing at all, but I wouldn't be able to uh, express somebody else's lyrics because it just doesn't have any meaning to me. Uh, I'm not doing this to be really cool, you know, people say, oh, I like this band, and their first song is where everything else is shit. My favourite hardcore bands are the bands that I grew up listening to that nobody else would have heard of, so Triple H, you know, are, are probably still one of my most favourite bands ever. Uh, another screamo band from Peterborough called Men This Tear, who are fucking incredible. Course of Action, you know, who played the first show, headline the first show that I ever went to, is still really important to me. Um, I actually really like... People expect me to, like, spit out loads of like, metalcore bands, but that's not really true. I'm into, like, shitty European youth group bands, really. Um, there's a band called Section 8, not the band from New Jersey, who are fucking incredible. Um, they've got this song called Getting to the Pit, and Triple H covered this song, Getting to the Pit, and it's just... It's, I mean, it just encapsulates as hardcore for me. If I hear, like, the opening bars to that song, I'm, I mean, I'm instantly doing this thing we used to do in Peterborough, where it's like, you know... But it just comes straight back to me. So, yeah, the bands, my favourite bands are uh, Triple H, Kanan, Course of Action, Band Called Stand from Grimsby, Outlast, Section 8, uh, 30 Seconds to Armageddon, just stuff that was, was happening around the time that I first got into hardcore. I think that, you know, although now I'm quote-unquote adult and a parent, you know, I don't, I don't get to go to shows as much as I do, but it, it literally informs everything that I do. You know, I wouldn't be vegan if it wasn't for, for hardcore, and that's something that impacts on my life every day. It's something that I talk about every day with my colleagues at work. It's something that I push every day. It's something that I'm interested in every day. You know, I wouldn't be straight edge, which is probably one of the most important aspects of my personality, I think, my, my resistance of that normal, everyday culture. Uh, you know... The stuff that I've learned through hardcore and the connections that I've made through hardcore are more important to me than the majority of stuff in my life. You know, 
you know, it's a typical cliche and everybody says it, but you know, ha- uh, a number of hardcore kids are, are, are like my family. You know, they're people that I share things that I can't share with anybody else that I've met through hardcore and I've had those friendships through hardcore. So I think, you know, it it could never be just a hobby. It's so much more important than a hobby, and I think that's what sets hardcore and punk apart from things like heavy metal or from R and B or rap or whatever. It's not just something you do on the side. It's something that we're we're a part of a community that we're in part of. You know, this this DIY thing that we've got, putting on shows, putting out records, making friends, putting people up in your on your fucking floor. You know, meeting people at the airport at four o'clock in the morning and then taking them straight out for breakfast. You know, that's that's hardcore to me. It's not just this music. It's everything that goes along with it. Uh, yeah, so, again, mostly, mostly local people and I've ended up becoming friends with them. Um, Alan Dargan from Canaan, who be- who's become one of my best friends, I've, I've always looked up to him. He's a sellout now, okay. by the way. Uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit heartbroken about that, but he was someone that I always sort of held up as a, you know, this martyr of straight edge. Um, and a guy called Max Mitchell, I don't know if you know Max. He's a fucking sick guy. I met him probably... 2001, uh, outside of show in Peterborough, uh, Caliban had just played Stand and some other bands. And he said to me, you see all this ninja shit that people are doing? Fuck that shit, you get too tired too quickly. You want to be doing two steps, posi moshes, like Tom Campbell. And that, yeah, so Max Mitchell is a very important person in my life. And I'm If you put this bit in and any Americans are watching, FYA was a really good show. But the best show we ever played was the show with Earth Crisis, like CTW Fest. Um, it was fucking incredible. People just went nuts. You know, we played a cover of like one of my favourite bands, Kanan. It was just fucking wild. That was the best. That's the best show that I've ever experienced. I mean, every show with Repentance, really, really fortunate, was was incredible. Like from when we started, each one just seemed to get better and better and better and better and better. But yeah, that CTW Fest really sticks out in my mind as, as something we've played was just fucking incredible. We, we, had, we played one show in Ireland uh, <laughs> that was just not very good at all. We played above this band called Bitch Falcon, who, who were great. Now, they were, they were really good. They were like, just like this cool indie band. Um, but everyone had turned up to see them. We played at like 2 o'clock in the morning and it was really fucking awkward. Everyone had gone home. So that was a bad show. That was the only bad show we played. Uh, the concept of UKHC, I think. Um, so when I started going to sh- like, people, there was this thing of regional hardcore, and I don't think I think with the internet being as prevalent as it is now, you don't get regional hardcore anymore. You've got one big UK HFC scene, and it really wasn't like that uh, when I started going to shows. Um, people were connected and people were putting on shows, but it was you had your local your local scene. And it wasn't just hardcore bands either. So you couldn't have a niche taste. You couldn't just like beatdown, or you couldn't just like metalcore, or you couldn't just like youth crew. You know, you had to like everything. So the first shows that I would be going to were, you know, you'd have a metalcore band, you'd have a punk band, you'd have a ska punk band, you'd have probably an indie band, you'd have, you know, a new metal band. And it'd be great, and it's this really eclectic mix, but that was your local scene and the whole it was a DIY scene that spanned many different genres, and it was fucking incredible. Um, but you don't get mixed shows anymore, really, in hardcore. You don't get... So you would, like today, you wouldn't get a ska band on this because hardcore is no longer original. Hardcore is UK hardcore, and you can be just a hardcore kid, but when I, you know, not that I've been going to shows forever, but 20 odd years. You, you couldn't just be a hardcore kid, or, or, or you'd get no one to your shows. You know, you had to give flyers to everyone in town. Yeah. You know, not everyone had the internet, and a lot of people had dial-up. So you'd go out to the centre of town, and you'd 
there was a, a couple of guys in my town called X Dean and Dan X, and they did the shows X Dean and Dan X presents. You can go through there to the toilet. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, don't worry. Quite a comedic experience, this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, but we had these guys, X Dean and Dan X, and they'd hand out flyers in the centre of town, and they'd give them to fucking everyone, and they really pushed like our local scene. And there was another, there was a record label called Positive Outlet Records, and they just had a store on on the market, so anyone could come up and pick up pick up a rec like an actual record or an actual CD. So that's what I think has changed. Yeah. I think I think the only real regional scene is that whole LS LX four six yeah. whatever scene is the guys from Leeds that have really got that tight knit group of people There's, they're the, the only real regional scenes where people are still have that quote unquote pride in their local scene so people would say like Glasgow Hardcore or people would say like London Hardcore or London Straight Edge it's, it doesn't exist in the same the same way a regional hardcore scene would I mean uh, Ruction is a, is a classic example of that so Ruction have got their own thing they have like Beat down and uh, and that type of thing. Well, not really beat down. So I wouldn't call it beat down. You know, it's just straight up hardcore, really. But they're known for that type of hardcore. And if every other fucker in England decided they didn't like hardcore anymore, Ruction would still have their scene and it'd still be really strong because they're from that age of regional hardcore. Okay, so from uh, for a purely selfish reason, uh, the Boys Head, which used to be in Peterborough, or the old locomotive, which used to be in Peterborough, were both. It's all right. It's just. <laughs> it's all right. Just go. I thought you guys were like the middle of the film. We are. This is us to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, both the Boys Head. Uh, we ha we had a, a, a few venues. We had the Boys Head, the Crown, the old locomotive. And they were just like shitty, dingy back rooms in the back of pubs. Um, but that's where I grew up listening to, put on shows. Never in the crowd because I'm too young, but we put on shows at the Boys Head, me and my group of friends. And they were fucking brilliant. And they were, uh, they were between sort of 2003 and four. We were really in this peak of hardcore. So they went off at every show and we got people coming down from all these other regional scenes. So that will always have a place in my heart. But I think bigger venues that people might know, probably the Underworld. It's probably one of my favourite in the UK. Or the Broomhall Centre or the Blind Centre in Sheffield. When they were packed, I mean, if they were empty, it was shitty, but when, they, when the big bands... I would drive. The sound wasn't the best. And oh, it was awful. Just the atmosphere. Yeah, but, but sound's not important in hardcore. That's, yeah. that's, that's the thing. Like Anyone can play in a hardcore band. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. It's, if people are going mad, I, I, I believe fully that the, the band is the least important thing in hardcore. It's all, it's all about the crowd. If yeah. the crowd fucking go off, you could sound awful. You don't even need to be switched on. The crowd are going off. Um, nobody wants to be in a band with me because now I'm just someone's fat old dad. Uh, so no, no plans to be in a, in a band. Unless, unless you want to be in a band with me, Charlie. No, I'm going to go to the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> This is what I'm faced with every day, so at the moment, no. Uh, I'd like to do like another band, but I don't know what it would be like. It probably wouldn't be like Repentance. It would probably be like some Euro uh, straight-edge youth crew band from 97 or something, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's the song that I did is absolutely brilliant. Um, but they're not one of my favourite bands, so it probably wasn't as special for me as other people, like Sheep or Tommy P or, or some of the other guys. It, it, it wasn't as special. I was essentially just doing it as a favour for Sheep. That sounds like a really shitty thing to say, doesn't it? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was brilliant. And, and you know, I, I understand the importance of Chokehold, but it, for me it was always just like crappy UK bands that... You know, mean nothing to yeah. anybody else but mean loads to me so it was cool and I enjoyed it but see I still felt bad because you did get bullied a little bit in the YouTube I did get Once bullied yeah I that, feel uh, that no yeah no problem not your fault but if that guy who commented about me being fat is watching this video thanks mate <laughs>
I often say it's a bit like a cult. Um, so I try and keep, so I've got quite a lot of X tattoos and I try and keep them covered up because like you say, it's fucking cringy to explain it. Uh, but actually my boss at work not so long ago said, oh, what's, what's with all the X's? And I thought I'd, I'd escaped that, I didn't think she'd noticed. But then I had to sit her down and explain Ian McKay, minor threat, through to earth crisis, you know. So I have a tendency to waffle on, as you might have noticed. So I just waffle it out and tell them about the whole thing. Uh, I, I am a dad to a very wonderful, uh, intelligent, feminist child. Um, and that takes up most of my time. I like to build shit, but I don't build anything that's any good uh, that anybody would want. So I've basically got a load of crap in my house that I've built that no one would want. Um, I work uh, in, in tenancy sustainment. So I think that is a part of the carrying on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I work in tenancy sustainment, which is kind of informed by hardcore as well. Um, so I do. We kind of stop people that have drug addictions, child support issues, um, child protection plans losing their tenancies so they've still got somewhere to live. Um, and I kind of feel like I got into that because of the compassionate things that I learned through hardcore, so yeah. That's